from Zuyut Snobber in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Laser eye center. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host... Right down our telephone number, you gotta meet it, it's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 It's Thursday, and time for another edition of Like Is 101. Well, it's like is 101. Welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. If baby wants steak, baby gotta wait, cause I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Yeah. Buy ya, lick it, don't buy ya. B, if she answers the cell phone, disappear. Yeah. Wanna get laid? Gotta be an oh. asshole. Spike, use prophylactics with Tabasco. Hit it, quit it, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Pooh. Got to knock up, but you're looking to switch. Pull a Hail Mary and dump that bitch. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Bye. Kiss 101. Bye. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Bye. Kiss 101. It's Like It's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like It's 101. And you know the basics. But for those who don't, let's review. First of all, this is not a class about fixing your relationship or fixing your marriage. Okay? I do not advocate marriage for men. I don't believe there's anything in it for a man to get married. And your professor also does not necessarily advocate you being in any kind of relationship. This is a class about getting laid. And anybody who's been married or in a relationship knows the difference between that and getting laid. People who are not married or in a relationship get laid more often. Some people who are married or in a relationship don't get laid at all. This is a class for people who want to get laid. Is that you? If that's you, stay right here in your seat. If it is not you, it's time to get up and leave for another classroom. I'm not kidding. <laughs> This is it right here. We are here to teach guys how to get laid. That is our purpose. Now, the basics of Like Is 101 go like this. The purpose of dating is porking. Dating equals porking. If you have a date scheduled for this weekend, upcoming, and you're not absolutely certain that getting laid is going to be the outcome, cancel it today. What are you doing? We are not here to buy things for chicks. We are not here to take them to movies. God bless Steve Carell, but we are not here to take a girl over to see Get Smart. We're not. We're not. I'm not saying don't go to the movies. I'm saying don't waste your time and money spending it on chicks. You want to go to the movies? Call a friend and go to a movie. Besides, it's expensive to go to a movie right now. Take a buddy. By the way, your buddy will pay his own way. Or if you pay for the tickets, he'll pay for the popcorn. Do it like that. Don't waste money on some chick. Hook up with somebody after the movie. That's a good idea. But come on. That's not the purpose of a date. The purpose of a date is not to spend $120 on concert tickets and then another $120 on dinner. And all that so you can sit and listen to her bluster on about her job and her kitty cat and her puppy dog. And now she's now a born-again virgin. 
Oh, yeah, I used to do anything with anyone, but uh, those days are over. <laughs> if that's the kind of dates you've been having, stop doing that. Period. You want to get laid. End of story. If alcohol or other chemicals are not being consumed, some of our listeners like to go green, for example. Okay, you're environmentally responsible. Uh, if, if chemicals are not involved, you're not going to get her where you want her to go. That is, into the sack. No Starbucks, no lunch, no movies, no picnics. You don't want the light of day to hit her face. It's that simple. You see her at night, you drink or do whatever else you do chemically, and then you get her into the sack. Get the job done and then get the hell out of there. Speed is of the essence. No big, long conversations that last until sunrise. We sat and talked all night. It was so wonderful. Don't. Please. Hit it and quit it. Do you hear me? I'm, I'm not kidding about this. Hit it and quit it. End of story. It's just amazing to me how many of you drag these things on and sit and have conversations. You give these women what they want. They're attention whores. They love to eat up as much of your time as they possibly can. I was sent an article from abcnews.com by a listener. And I want you to hear this in the context of Like It's 101. Because um, this pretty much sums up what I've been telling you as your professor. Here is scientific evidence, once again, of something your professor has taught you in the classroom based on his wellspring of past experience. Your professor is not a biologist, is not, well, it, I'm an amateur anthropologist, of course, but uh, these are actual scientists doing research and proving what your professor's been telling you all along. This story from abcnews.com is called, Why Nice Guys Finish Last. And the subheadline says, New Research points to biological reason why girls like bad boys. I mean, this is what your professor has been talking about. Listen to this story. Ricky Menezes, a 22-year-old from Marlboro, Massachusetts, says he knows he will hook up with about 20 girls in the next month. This is from abcnews.com. ABC News looks into guys hooking up. This is just into ABC News. A 22-year-old will hook up with about 20 girls in the next month. I'm Charles Gibson with the latest on the hookup phenomena. How does he know this, you ask? The story continues. Ricky knows this because he's what we call a bad boy. The type of guy who knows exactly how to act, what to say, and how to manipulate women into giving him what he wants. It all started in high school, Ricky said. I started being the outgoing, crazy, funny kid that everyone thought was fun and wanted to hang out with. After being validated by his peers in high school, Ricky said he has more or less mastered the art of being a bad boy. And it's done so with one overriding goal in mind. Sexual conquest. Ricky said, I don't pretend to be anything I'm not. I'm honest and outspoken. I say that I'm just looking to hook up. I'm not afraid to go for it. And I rarely get rejected. Oh, he added, and I'm in a band. You have to be in a band. Girls love guys in bands. <laughs> Art knows all about that. Most everyone knows, or at least knows of, a stereotypical bad boy like Ricky. The guy with such high self-esteem. Remember what I told you about self-esteem? The guy with such high self-esteem, he could aptly be called a narcissist. The guy who wins women over with deceit 
callousness and impulsive behavior. Yeah, baby. Basically, <laughs> basically the type of guy who resembles a real-life version of Hugh Grant's character in Bridget Jones's Diary. And I am proud to say, I have no idea what Hugh Grant's character was like in Bridget Jones's Diary. I mean, every movie I've seen Hugh Grant in, he gives the impression of being a fagula, and that's fine, but uh, I just got to say, I can't imagine Hugh Grant being a bad boy. Unless he was with that Divine Brown <laughs> over there near my house on Sunset. <laughs> that was as manly as I've ever heard of him. Says here, uh, the success of Ricky and so many other bad boys with women seems to add weight to the popular saying, good guys finish last. And, listen carefully, men, there might be more than just a grain of truth in those mantras about bad boys. This is according to ABC News. New research suggests they might actually be attracting more women than their nicer counterparts. We already knew that, right, boys? Yes, we did. Says here, and again, this is actual scientific research. Researchers at New Mexico State University in Las Cruces, New Mexico, gave 200 college students personality tests to see how many of what psychologists call dark triad traits they possessed. These traits, these are the ones you have to master, boys. These traits include callousness, impulsive behavior, does this sound like any professor you know? Extroversion, narcissism, and various other what they call antisocial traits for which bad boys are known. The researchers also asked about the students' sex lives, their feelings about sexual relationships, their number of sexual partners, and what they are seeking in sexual or romantic relationships. According to Peter Jonason, lead study investigator, Although society tends to look down upon these negative, dark triad personality traits, there this is ABC News talking now, there seems to be quite an upside to being a bad boy. We would traditionally consider these dark triad traits to be adverse personality traits. And we think women would avoid these kind of men. But, said Jonason, what we show is counterintuitive. This is the scientist talking here. That women are attracted to these bad boys, and they do pretty well in terms of their sheer numbers of sexual partners. They're taking quantity over quality as their sexual agenda, being serially monogamous and having multiple partners or one-night stands. Jonathan compared the type of dark triad bad boy that the study refers to as a modern-day James Bond figure, a man with little empathy for others, a penchant for fast cars and even faster women, and a seeker of short-term rather than long-term goals, especially concerning the other sex. And because these characters appear in this study to be successful at achieving their short-term goals, which in this case is a short-term sexual relationship, Jonathan believes such character traits have persevered in so many people because... They seem to be evolutionarily successful. Jonas had explained, dark triad traits are useful in pursuing our agendas at any given time. If you like someone and want to meet them and date them, people who have the dark triad traits appear to be more successful at facilitating short-term mating. Jonas validated this point with a comparison to the popular VH1 show, The Pickup Artist, wherein nerdy, nice guys meet with a typical bad boy to learn how to pick up more of these dark triad traits and also more women. That's, that's from ABC News, boys. That is New Mexico State University doing scientific research. This is not your professor talking here. This is research being done by the science community. Being callous, insensitive, cold, unfeeling. These are all the traits you must master. You can't be worrying about the welfare of others. You just want to hit them and quit them. Bang them and clang them. Use them and lose them. Pump them and dump them. That's what you want to do. The minute you start feeling sorry for them, or you start listening to them, or you start blah, 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 having a long conversation with them, you're dead. 
Now, as your professor, I am here to help facilitate your getting late. Okay? The purpose of this course is to help save you time, money, and energy that would otherwise be wasted on chicks who are not going to give you what you want, which is to get late. The purpose of this course is to teach you how to save time, money, and energy. Don't waste time, money, and energy on chicks we're not going to put out. We have a three strikes, you're out rule. If a woman does not put out on the first three dates, she's out. We have the $40 a date rule. You don't spend more than $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. We don't date single mothers, period. We don't give our sperm away. We're not having babies with anybody. We're not agreeing to help anybody get pregnant. We're having a hard time getting pregnant. We don't give money or lend money to anybody. We don't paint your apartment. We don't move your furniture. We don't do a goddamn thing for women. We just give them the old stromboli. If you've got questions about this, your professor is here to help. If you have complaints or criticisms of your professor, those calls are welcome to it. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And if you're in another country, call our international line. Our country code in the United States is 1. The area code here, 323. And the number is 520-6211. That's 1-323-520-6211. All right, class is in session, boys. Start dialing. Tom, Tom, Tom. Like this. 1 800 5800 Tom. Sometimes I make a date to go out with them, and I do your rule. I say to them, What time are you having dinner? And then I say, I'll meet you for drinks afterwards. And then when they start demanding dinner to get together, I say, Okay, let me make a reservation. And I call them back and I say, Look, I'm going to meet you at the restaurant. Get all dressed up and go to the restaurant. The only problem is I never show up. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. It's the Tom Likus Show at 1-800-5-800-TOM. Likus 101, I am your professor, Carolina, on the Tom Likus Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Hi, Tom. I was, I've been listening to your show, and I had a comment about your um, theory of hit it and quit it. Yes. Well, first and foremost, I think you're hilarious, and I think a lot of your commentary is really funny about women and stuff. But this one I have to disagree with. Just because your hit it and quit it um, mentality or theory just doesn't work. Because Sure it works. It doesn't work. It's been working for me for years. <laughs> I'm sure you get late. But the thing is, this is my problem with the hit it and quit it theory. Okay. I want to say hello, by the way, to all the girls whose phone calls I'm not returning. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't gotten back to you, girls. <laughs> the thing is, Hang in there. Maybe I'll get around to it next week. <laughs> you okay? So you you sleep with all these women, right? Eventually, eventually you're going to come across a psycho chick here and there, and eventually you might get some kind of disease, and eventually, darling, I use condoms religiously. Pregnant. I use condoms religiously, and by the way, if I cross enough streets, I might get hit by a bus. That doesn't stop me from crossing the street. Okay, very true, very true. But you're not. Do you? If I fly on enough airplanes, if I fly on enough jet planes, if I fly on enough airplanes, a plane might crash. The more I fly, the more likely it is it'll crash. Sure. sure doesn't stop true. me from flying. That's a valid point. But again, you're dealing with an inanimate object here. We're talking about people like with different feelings, backgrounds, like emotions, all that stuff. By the so, way, psycho chicks are the best in the sack. They all get at sex, right? They're great. Yeah. But what about if that psycho chick gets pregnant? Then you're stuck with that person. Well, I, life, I use you know condoms. I, mean? I use condoms religiously. Just, just like. Well, you know, I, I, all I'll go on is my track record. I've been doing this for decades, and I, uh, <laughs> I don't have any children. Well, see, eventually it's going to come to you. Eventually. Eventually. It's, it's the eventually it won't matter anymore. Huh? Oh, my goodness. See, and, and then and we, what if you do get a psycho chick pregnant? Darling, first of all, I generally do vet these chicks to see what they would do if they got knocked up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You understand? You put and a Hail Mary out there? I've never had to use the Hail Mary. <laughs> I have never had to use it because, uh, by, by the way, I thought I was going to have to use it, and that, that was how I came up with the idea in the first place. Sure, which is a, is a good way out, by the way. Yes, I mean, there was one chick one time who I thought I was going to have to use it on. Uh, she kept telling me that she thought she was pregnant, and then she kept telling me she didn't want to go to the doctor for a pregnancy test. And then she used it 
to continue to get me to go out with her, spend time with her, talk to her on the phone, call her four times a day to see if anything had changed, if she had her period, and she kept saying she hadn't. Well, maybe she thinks she wanted you to spend time with her. Maybe she just wanted to get laid more. No, but we I wasn't having sex with her anymore. Oh, but see, then that doesn't figure that it included series. It's darling, that was one girl out of... Darling, darling, darling. Can we crank my volume up there so she can hear me? Just crank it all the way. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Good. Listen to me. That was one out of hundreds. But see, that one Do you understand? It was one out of hundreds. See, and it's still, see, it's, it's causing, it still causes uh, these memories, right? So that one situation where you... I don't care. You know what? I, I, one time I drove on a road and it was very icy and I almost skidded into a wall and hit it. It was terrible. That doesn't mean I don't drive a car. Sure. That, that, again, a valid point. I still remember that night on that icy road. Okay. But that doesn't mean I don't drive. I agree with you on that. So why why is this different from all the other bad things that can happen to you? Mm. Yeah, because this is, I mean, it's not just pregnancy. Or Dying in a car wreck is pretty bad. Sexually transmitted disease? Well, Again, dear, I, I, I use condoms religiously. Really? Well, haven't you ever not, like, in the heat of the moment, not used one? Uh, not in a very long time, dear. Oh. What about when you're in a relationship? Like when you're dating someone? I, I don't assume the... I do not assume that the other person is going to be uh, monogamous. Huh. And how many times do you sleep with somebody before you decide that you're done with sleeping with them? You know, on that it, it varies. Depends on how good it is. <laughs> what if it's okay? Uh, it, well, again, it depends on what else is out there. It's all a matter of the, what the market uh, will bear. <laughs> and at, at any given time, how many women do you sleep with at any given time? It varies. It varies. It has been as few as one. It has been as many as, uh, you know, six or seven uh, rotating in from the bullpen. Oh, that's not too bad. I was and, but rotating. In other words... Ten or twelve going on. Uh, uh, darling, there's only seven days in a week. <laughs> So sometimes you can fit in two or three in a day, though. Right? And by the way, that there are others who are, you know, on the inactive list, who every once in a while you uh, call up from AAA and you say, you know what, uh, the rest of the bullpen's not getting the job done. Uh, see, but, see, Tom, I, I don't know if I agree with you on this hit it and quit it. It's kind well, of, of course you don't, because you're a girl. Yeah, well, this this Ricky guy, you know, he's right. You know, girls are very, they, they, it was his name Ricky, right? Ricky the stud or Ricky the bad boy. Yeah. Just, he's right. Girls do like bad boys. and go, girls There you go. Boys. You know, be, the, that's what works. Yeah, they love it. They love that stuff. But they're, but they're idiots also. But who cares if they're idiots? I'm not giving them an IQ test. I'm banging them. Oh, uh, well, yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. I hope they don't say a word. I hope they shut up. As I have always said, if Forrest Gump had a sister who was a 9 or a 10, I'm in. Now, now these girls that you hit it and quit it, are these girls that eventually are fine with the hit it and quit it theory? Do you think I don't care they're if they're fine with it. I couldn't care less if they're fine with it. I don't care. You don't care? No. That's a shame. Why should I care? This is They don't have to have sex with me. Well, you're, you're right, but you know, I guess, well, you're right. I guess women are stupid, huh? Not all of them. No, uh, the ones you're sleeping with. Hopefully. <laughs> They're stupid <laughs> enough to even have sex with me. That's right. <laughs> well, more power to you. Well, thank you, dear. <laughs> have a nice day. You too. There she goes. Sheesh. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Nice to speak to you, sir. Thank I know. You. Oh. Yes. A uh, question about the forty-dollar rule. I agree with it to a certain extent, but but let me let me uh, propose this uh, scenario for the average Joe, who who makes fifty thousand a year, not you, the average Joe that can't pull nines or tens on any given night. Let's say he happens to have a shot at a date with a ten smoking chick who's totally cool. Is the forty-dollar rule still? Yes, especially for you, because you can't afford to be spending more than $40 on a date. No, no, no uh, hypothetically. 
hypothetical cr- credit card. I'm talking hot chick. This guy's used to banging fives and sixes. But then, uh, but again, you know, you know, you don't need to spend more than forty dollars because spending more money, and I've been with tens, huh? spending more money doesn't guarantee they're going to have sex with you. Uh, good point. Good point. But neither does spending forty bucks though. <laughs> you could spend zero. You know what? <laughs> you know how girls are. I'm telling you. If you find a place with a hipness factor, and L.A. is full of places like the Dime or the yeah. Mint or El Coyote, to name some. Sure. They've got a hipness and a coolness factor about them. Right. You, you don't have to spend a lot of money in those places. Okay. I mean, l- l- let, me, let me put it this way. Is it not worth rolling the dice and spending 60 more bucks? It is not worth it. It does not make any difference. You can spend forty dollars, a hundred and forty dollars, or fourteen hundred dollars. It doesn't make any difference. I like that. Okay, I like. And I'm say, again, I am speaking as someone who has been with nines and tens, without question. But the one, the ordinary Joe, that has never had a shot. The ordinary Joe especially needs to know that you don't have to spend more than forty dollars. Wow. Well, maybe that's why he hasn't been able to bang a ten, though. No, I, I don't. I I totally disagree. I think the main reason guys don't get to bang a ten is because they think they can't get a ten. Good, so good point. so they don't try. That is true. The reality I, is nines and tens have the lowest self esteem, without question, of any women out there. The women with the highest self esteem are women like the one on our MySpace page, who's four eleven and one hundred and sixty pounds, and called <laughs> us and said she was a ten. <laughs> Those are the ones with high self-esteem. Yeah. Those are the ones with high self-esteem. Really hot chicks are perfectionists. They're very hard on themselves. And and, and that's why they cake their faces with makeup and spend X amount of dollars on their hair. And many of them them will tell you, and they're not kidding, that guys are afraid to approach them because they think these girls are occupied or have boyfriends or husbands, when many times it's not true. I've heard that many times from from hot my my girlfriends, and I hate to say that speaking with you, but I do have a a very hot girlfriend. Her sister is smoking, and she can't get laid to save her life. Well, then you see what I'm saying is true. You, you know what? You're right. It's becoming clear to me now. And and therefore, I, the, the, believe me, I'm telling you, the average Joe can get nines and tens, can get them relatively easily you have to have confidence and you have to believe what i'm telling you which is that they've got the lowest self-esteem of any women out there and remember the lower a woman's self-esteem the more likely it is she'll have sex even with you let let, let me ask you this though don't those high maintenance hot chicks don't i mean i'm telling you from experience the hottest chicks are not the highest maintenance good point the highest maintenance are the ones in the middle. Yeah, wow. Who think they're a lot hotter than they are? Ah, uh, you're you're entirely right. That 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 statement's very accurate, sir. Yeah, I, I again, I'm speaking from a lifetime of experience here. I don't doubt it. Hey, uh, uh, point well taken. Uh, hey, hang on a second, Mark. Uh, Matt, what did you want to say to Mark? You know, I got to tell this clown one thing. I mean, I'm 29. <laughs> I just turned 29. And I've had five chicks at one time that were all at least a minimum of eight and above. And I did not spend a dime on them, if not more than $2. They come to my home bringing my food, bringing my drinks, and I still tag every one of them. I get more ass than a toilet seat, and I don't even work. I love it. You know, that's how it really is, man. You have no idea. Your $40 thing, man, you want to spend 40 bucks on a chick, hey. More power to you. If you got the, uh, the money to waste, I don't waste my money on a broad, but I'll waste my time for about an hour with them. That's about it. I don't think it's time wasted with your hour, though, is it? You know what? It's not. But you know what? My 40 bucks, it's not getting wasted either. <laughs> thank you oh, for that, Matt. Two bucks. Matt, thank you. I appreciate that. Let me get Q in here. Q, what do you want to say to Mark? Hey, Mark, check it out, man. Instead of spending more money on a 9 or 10, just to make it appear like you have more money. You know, you know what I mean? You don't have to spend more money. Tom yeah. always says, just make it look like you have more money. That's right. There's more where this came from. It's, it's all about illusion. 
Well, yep. the, yeah, you know, just like there are people who like role playing. You know, there's women out there like you to dress like a highway patrol officer or like you to dress like, uh, you know, dress in leather or whatever. If if you are a doctor for an evening, they don't really they're going to check your credentials. They can't. By the time they check it, you've already gotten what you wanted. Very, very true. Very true. I like it. You can always use the the ATM receipt trick too, man. Have you heard about that? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I, you got I've too, man. About that. <laughs> um, and 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 the trick I've told you guys many times: uh, find a really hot house that is uh, undergoing renovations. You know, here in LA, you would go to a place like Bel Air or Beverly Hills, somewhere in the Hollywood Hills. Right. Yeah, you know, it's got like a chain link fence around it, and you say. There it is, my house. I'm living in this apartment temporarily until my place is finished. There it is. And let me tell you something. No woman is going to check with the building department to find out if you have that permit. Right. All right. So you show a woman a house in a neighborhood where the houses are two, three, four, five million dollars under construction. She is going to sleep with you. Very true. Very true. Makes sense, hey. Q? Definitely, man. Okay. IQ, Mark, thank you very much for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just started listening to you yesterday, man. What is the most important thing that you've learned here so far? That I ain't got to take no girl out to dinner to get some. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, Likas 101, I am your professor, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Jack on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, hey, Tom. How's it going? Going great. Uh, just about actually listening to you. It's, about, it's been about two weeks now. That's good. I love your show, man. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, I have, I have a question to ask you. Um, I went to Vegas this past weekend. Um, I met a girl there at the club. So we were there anyways and hanging out, and she had a friend, actually her cousin with her. Her cousin wasn't that good looking, but she was really good looking. So we talked and stuff, and um, we started dancing. So after we danced, we started making out on the dance floor. And her cousin, she got jealous because no one was talking to her, so she told her, let's leave. Yeah, see, that's what the uh, that's what the fat and fugly friend or the fat and fugly <laughs> cousin always does. Exactly, she was a fat. She didn't look. She didn't. Ha she didn't have a body. She didn't have the face. Nothing. But she well, was, fat or fugly, but you know what I'm talking about. I definitely, I definitely know. Anyways, get to the point. We had uh, we had already exchanged numbers and everything. So um, she's like, I gotta go. You know, my cousin's calling me. So she's like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll be back. And I knew right there that she wasn't gonna come back. So anyways, she left, and then um, we didn't talk at, at all in Vegas. So when I came back Monday, um, she knew I was going to come back to L.A. So she calls me Monday, and she's like, oh, hey, how you doing, and this and that. I'm like, oh, my, all right, how you doing, and this, this and that. And she's like, I'm coming next month to L.A. I'm like, oh, cool. That's great, you know what I'm saying? She's like, you want to meet up and hang out and stuff? I'm like, yeah, definitely. We'll hang out, we'll chill and stuff like that. And she's like, well, I miss your lips, and this and that. I'm like, oh, I do too, this, this and that. So, and then we start talking about, you know what I mean, like what she does, what I do, and all that. And then I and then she's like, oh, just um, I don't know what she just told me. She's like, don't think, don't get the idea. When I come down there, you're gonna you're gonna get late. And this now I'm like, no, I'm not thinking that. So that's my question to you: is what should I do, Tom, to be able to get laid? You know, when she comes down here. Well, women sometimes say that because they don't want you to think they're a slut, and then they have sex with you anyway. Definitely. But remember, there's a three date rule here. You've already had date one. Yeah. So she's got two chances, and if it doesn't happen, you're just going to put her on ice and move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because I thought about it. Like, I, I barely even know her for 30 minutes, and she, she started making out with me and everything. And she even she kept telling me, oh, let's let's go to the room and stuff. And her cousin just... Well, she's exactly the slut you think she is, okay? Yeah, and that's why she she's is. telling you, well, don't think you're going to get laid. Yeah, like the other 117,000 guys who got laid before <laughs> you. Yeah. So... So you think I should just, when she comes down, because she's like, she's going to come down with a couple of friends. And I well, told her, well, you're not, first of all, you don't want to see her with her friends. Yeah, definitely. I, I already told you her. You already had that happen with the cousin. Yeah. 
Exactly. No friends. Yeah, I told her. I told her. I'm like, don't bring your cousin. She's like, oh, my cousin's not coming down here. Uh, told- but you don't want to see her with her other friends either. Yeah, definitely. So, but- yeah, she'll. here's what she's going to do. She's going to come down and she's going to go, you're going to get a call like at 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. Hey, Jack, we're over here at the Highlands, and uh, it's me and my 17 friends, and we're all here together, and yeah. I thought maybe you ought to come over. Uh-huh. And she'll want to impress her friends with the fact she can pick up the phone and get you to run in the middle of the night. Yeah. Say no to that. Say no to that? Say no to that. Okay. You are not going to see her unless it's just her. Yeah, she, well, she told me, she's like, when I come down there, she's like, can you bring a couple of your friends? Let them hang out with my friends and let's go, me and you, let's go hang out. So that's what she told me. No. I, I shouldn't do that? No. Oh, okay. Because I'm telling you, she will use that as her excuse to get away. Uh-huh. No. The idea of this is so you can get to know her. Why do you need to be with her friends and then escape from that? Why don't you meet without the friends in the first place? Yeah. yeah. And the reason is because she's going to use her friends as an excuse. Oh, I'd love to stay, but Bill is sick and he needs to go home. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, no. What she said, she's like, I don't leave my friends alone. She's like, why don't you bring your friends as in my friends? No, no, but the, the point is, what, leave her friends alone. Her friends are alone now. No, huh? Her friends are alone now. They're in L.A. They function just fine without her. Yeah. But uh, you, why don't you tell her, hang out with your friends, and then we can hook up later. Uh-huh. I should tell her that, huh? Yes. Okay. Or uh, hang out with your friends tonight. We'll hook up tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah I, I, but I, you I, have I, to I, find I, some way not to be with her and her friends. Uh-huh. When she wants you to be with her and the friends, here's what she's saying. I'm not having sex with you. Yeah. The, I agree, I agree. the only way you know you have a chance to have sex with her is if you get her alone. Mm-hmm. No cousins, no friends, no uncles, no aunts, no mothers, no fathers. Mm-hmm. Alone. Okay. That doesn't mean she can't spend time with her friends when she's in town. Spend time with your friends. Call me when you guys are done. Yeah. We'll hook up later. Yeah. Do it like that. Make her come after me. Well, it's not just make her come after you. Make her, you need to separate her from the friends. Mm -hmm. The friends are the excuse in case she gets cold feet and doesn't want to have sex with you. Yeah, I agree. You don't want to give her that opportunity. That's true. I mean, really, do you, honestly speaking, Jack, if you were on your own and there was no chick that you were pursuing, do you like going out to clubs? No, I don't like clubs that, no. Do you like dancing? No, hell no. <laughs> hell no, you don't. Hell no. And that's my point. She will try to drag you out to as many places as possible. You'll be standing in line. You'll be paying cover charges. Yeah. You'll be zigzagging all over. Like, I know another place. Come on. And you'll be out till 2 in the morning when everything is closing. Then she's going to tell you that she knows her friends know a place that's open after hours. Huh. And there you'll be, 3, 4, 5 in the morning, some rave somewhere. Sun is coming up. Spending a lot of money. <laughs> spending a lot of money. You haven't gotten anything. Yeah. I mean, this is what they do. Women are attention whores, and they're, they they do a, a variety of tactics, okay? One of them is try to get as much attention as possible without ever putting out. Okay. And another one is to show off to their friends that they have guys, de- de- desirable guys. They, they snap their fingers and the guys show up. Yeah. And then she'll be, oh, this is my friend, Jack. And she'll introduce you to everybody. Mm -hmm. And do you really think she's going to... Why would she introduce you to everybody and then disappear? Yeah, that's true. Makes no sense. Yeah. I mean, this is what she told me, too. She's like, if you think about getting laid with me, she's like, I'll I'll, I'll hook you up with one of my friends I want to get laid. That's what she told me. Well... I'm like, no, no, I don't even think that. I'm like, I'm not even planning on doing that. But of course, that's what I'm planning on doing. But then don't do things that are designed to keep you from getting your hands on her. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm telling you, I have gotten this call. Uh-huh. I have gotten this call. There's women listening, and they know who they are. Yeah. You get the call at 10 o'clock at night, and you hear this loud noise in the background, uh-huh. loud crowd noise. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Why don't you come out and meet us? Yeah. Why don't you come out and meet us? Why do you want to do that? Yeah. I want to come out and meet you. Yeah. I want you to come in and meet me. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about. The Tom Likas Show.